I'm making a jockstrap pouch this morning. This is one of my basic pouch pro um, patterns. Since I'm adding the center stripe, this piece here to the center, my pattern, I just fold this in and cut the pattern piece out. That way it'll make room for the red center stripe that I may be putting in here. Right now I'm doing the center, adding the center stripe to one of the pouch pieces. What I'm doing is I'm just walking this straight piece around the curve of the pouch here. Some people call it a princess seam. where you're doing a straight piece of fabric against a curved piece of fabric to make it fit the body. I guess they call it a princess because it's mostly ladies wear around the bust area. What, what I'm trying to do is keep my bottom fabric since it's curved, straightening it out, going with the edge of my presser foot here, and just manipulating both the fabric and this without trying to stretch either one, just position them without any puckers. And this is bottom weight scuba knit fabric, four way stretch. And I'm using the little lightning bolt stretch stitch on my machine. And there's no way to do this quick because you have to do minor adjustments. What I'm spending most of my attention is getting this spot right here, staying with the same seam allowance and same lining up exactly with the edge of my presser foot, making about a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, give or take. Lining up the curved bottom piece with the straight red piece like this. And trying not to stretch them out, just trying to align them. So, little sewing, little repositioning, little sewing, little repositioning. I know it's annoying, but that's how it takes. And with this stitch, the little lightning bolt stitch, the default needle position is right here in the middle. So I'm using just using the edge of the presser foot here. And the thing, the reason I'm doing that is so all seven of the feed dogs underneath can grab all the fabric. If I want to, I can trim off this seam allowance later but it really helps having all that seam allowance versus trying to do like a 16th of an inch or quarter inch seam allowance. So with knit fabrics, 
sometimes a pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance. You can still do a half inch, a three eighths, a five eighths, whatever you want, and you can trim it back later. That extra fabric trying to go under the presser foot sometimes helps quite a bit when making precision lycra cut, lycra fabrics and spandex fabrics. And then this is the interior of the garment, and then this is the in exterior. The center stripe is going to be a flat, but you can see how well it curves with the curve doing this type of seam. Now I've got to do the other side and pay close attention to what I just did. And this time I'm going to have to use the red as the bottom and the black as the top. Same technique, but I'm just going to be lining up the red and then moving the black around a lot to go with the curve. Now, this is a heavyweight scuba knit. It's easy to sew with, doesn't get pulled into the machine too much. If you're working with <clears throat> lycra and spandex fabrics, lighter weight for like underwear, swimwear, Sometimes the fabric likes to get eaten by the machine. I use tissue paper, old wrapping paper. Put it under your presser foot and then put your fabric on top of it. And that really keeps the fabric from being pulled down through the needle plate. Lock stitch the first stitch here. Now, when you pull this away, most of this, almost all of the tissue paper always comes, up, comes away from it. If it doesn't, it'll get washed out in the wash. But be careful if it's colored, like red tissue paper. If you're using like white lycra, this will stay in the white lycra because this isn't color fast, it's just red tissue paper. So if you don't get it all out, make sure you don't put a colored tissue on a light lycra fabric. I'm doing the same as before. I'm just lining up the curved fabric with the straight edge, keeping it straight with the edge of the presser foot. Like I said, line these up, but don't stretch either one of these. A little, what's called finger taunt, which is just enough to keep the fabric flat and use finger manipulation. And yeah, I get my fingers right up against the needle. I've nailed my fingers several times. So if I do, it's not that big of a deal. Just the hazards of sewing.
when you get to go with the curve to line up getting this straight, sometimes you just have to grab most of the fabric and bunch it up. And make sure it's laying flat so you don't get any um, puckers or ripples. Get my fingers out of the way so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And what I'm concentrating on is this spot right here, trying to keep this as consistent as possible, not worrying about where the needle is, where everything else is, just where these two fabrics are on the raw edge, right on the edge of my presser foot. That's where all my concentration is. And the tissue paper, see most of it just pulls right off. Little pieces stuck in the threads. And that's the pouch with the center strip. Now I'm going to trim it up. I didn't do any measuring or anything. I just cut the stuff up. As you can see, it's a little not lined up. Top's fairly lined up. The bottom's a little wonky. So what I'm gonna do is just eyeball it and trim it up. There we go, it's like a nice pouch. Now I'm gonna do some top stitching on this. And I don't wanna do my mock reverse cover stitch because it's black thread and it's gonna be ch -ch -ch black, black on the red. I'm just gonna do a couple rows of straight stitching on the black here leaving the red all just red. I'm still going to be using the same little lightning bolt stitch. <clears throat> and then leaving about the three eighths of an inch seam allowance. It's going to give me a chance to give me two rows of top stitching one about a sixteenth of an inch, and then one about three-eighths of an inch. I don't need the tissue paper for this because I'm going through four layers of this. 
Thread came out of my needle. You can show my bobbin thread still there. I'm going to use the tissue paper just to make sure it doesn't grab the fabric down the I'm just going to eyeball the top stitching. You could use one of the presser feet that has for edge stitching or stitching in the ditch using the edge. This is just a quick project to get my mind off of the project that I scrapped a few minutes ago. And this curve, you could trim it if you want to, but this particular fabric's pretty good. You don't really have to trim it or cut the curve. But when you sew it, you just have to make sure it's all pressed flat. It's a little hard to see with the camera. Sorry about that. Forgot where the camera was. If you're scared of your sewing needle, you might not want to do this type of close-up sewing. Because sooner or later you will nail your finger. Just part of sewing. This sewing machine did come with the needle guard thing here. It lasted about a day before I took it off. Just, it was just in my way. More distracting than it was a safety feature. one line of top stitching. I would call that more of a eighth of an inch from the edge. Yep, eight. I still have plenty of room to do another row here.
what I'm doing is the first time I did this, I lined up this here with this edge here, this inner edge of the plastic. Now this time I'm lining up my stitch line with this. So these two will be equal and this will be equal. And if anything, I'm guilty of slowing at sewing at soft speed. using regular serger cone thread for my needle thread and for my bobbin thread I am using some woolly nylon which I don't ever recommend sewing at a very fast pace with it at all because it shreds rather easily One edge of the pouch is top stitched. And like I said, the middle of the this stitch, the default is right in the middle. So you could use either side as a, a guide. So since I use this spot here as the guide on the first one, this side, I'm going to use this side here. It'll come out almost identical to this. Now my, my pouch patterns, I always leave me enough room up here. So I'm not that worried about these all lining up because I'm going to trim them flat later. I do like to do a, a quick little lock stitch at the start of the stitches. Even though I, I know I'm probably gonna just cut the top part of this pouch off later. But for sewing, it helps if it's locked. Then when you're doing stretch knits on most of your machines, you don't want to pull, hinder, or push. You want to let your feed dogs pull it in as best it can. But you do want to just keep it enough taut to keep it flat, which is barely pulling on it at all.
and my bobbin's about to run out of thread. I can hear it getting almost out. Probably don't have enough to finish this top stitch. Should have checked before I did it. be a close one. Mm -hmm. so, some left on this bobbin, but it's just about empty. Whenever I have projects started, I always do five or six bobbins to make sure I have plenty of bobbins. See how the machine sounds a little heavier sounding? It's because the bobbin's a little more fuller. As you get lighter in the bobbin, it starts rattling a little bit more. people point out all the time you so 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 slowly I'm like yep that I do thanks for pointing that out it's like I didn't know I didn't know didn't already know I didn't do that There's a jock strap pouch. The center. center accent stripe. It's nice and contoured. Top stitching looks good. 
nice and even, no skip stitches. Insides, pretty good looking. But using the wooly nylon, this is really soft, much softer than thread. So you can make these unlined, or if you want to make a line pouch, you can make a line pouch. That's how I make my some of my basic jock strap pouches. Now, if this is just going to be a jock strap, I'll clean up these edges and then I'll use fold over elastic as the finishing on this. Add leg straps and a waistband, and you've got yourself a jock strap. Or I might trim it down a little bit and then sew it into a garment as a jock strap pouch on a boxer brief. But that's how I do my jack strap pouches.